Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Theta. I do want to say that I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research before investing money into crypto. If you haven't seen the previous update, make sure to watch that before watching this one. It's going to be linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now, taking a look at the daily chart. As you can see, we still have the same old Fibonacci retracement with the swing high in April of 2021 and with the swing low printed in August or rather July 2021. And obviously uh, the swing high is level zero and the swing low is the first Fibonacci retracement. Now that is because the extension levels are set to the downside. Now if this was in reverse, I would be dragging the Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high and the high would have been level one Fibonacci and the low would have been level zero Fibonacci. That's just a quick explainer, but I do have a, a video on how to use the Fibonacci retracement properly and that's going to be linked in the description. So make sure you watch that because the Fibonacci retracement is a major part of my technical analysis and it has worked wonderfully. Obviously, there is no indicator that will work 100% of the time, but uh, more often than not, Fibonacci retracements are pretty accurate on the support levels and it's very helpful with swing trading. So taking a look at the 1.618 target that we had here, and this is our technical target because once you start losing the swing low of the Fibonacci retracement, or rather the first Fib level, your next target is the 1.618 because nine times out of 10, once you lose the first Fib level or you break above the first Fib level, depending on the Fibonacci that you have, your technical target, you usually retrace all the way down to the 1.618. And that's exactly what we have done here in May 2022. We sort of back tested that same 1.618 as resistance and we got sent back down to the second Fibonacci retracement, which was at 70 cents, I believe. Was it 70 or 79 and a half cents? And right now we're even below that. So let me continue zooming in here. 79 and a half cents, yeah. And uh, we do have a support block, as you can see. The blue support block is based off of the swing high we printed in October of 2020 and the swing low we printed in November of 2020. Low. Let me get this um, knob on. There we go. So based off of these two points, we have a support block because as you can see, when you reach this level here in November of 2020, you got bought up pretty quickly. And generally speaking, once you had moved to the downside in this uh, particular area, people were buying up the token pretty rapidly. And it is safe to assume that once we start getting to these levels over here, there will be at least some sort of a buying pressure coming uh, from the bulls because this was a major support level back in the day. And uh, we've obviously lost the top of the support block and we're in the support block right now. So potentially we could be seeing Theta move all the way down to the bottom of the support block, which is all the way here at 55 cents. And yes, that may seem crazy for some of you right now, but don't forget where we came from. We were sitting all the way back up there at $16, right? $15. Dollars seventy one cents for a theta token, and right now we're sitting below um, eighty cents, right? Seventy one cents. So things can change drastically in the crypto market. So I would advise not buying all in at any point whatsoever. But obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. You have to do whatever you deem is necessary with your funds. But for me, buying at all all in at any point in time is really stupid because you're basically disabling your ability to buy whenever you have a stronger dip on the horizon. So you buy all in here, you have a little retracement and then you crash 60% and then you have no more money to buy into the, the dip. And that's just not a situation that I like to be in. And I try my best to avoid that. Now, zooming into the uh, next Fibonacci retracement level that we could be targeting, and it's just below the support block here at 52 or 53 cents roughly, and that's the 2.272. So have, the, have these levels on your charts. 
draw this Fibonacci retracement, draw these support blocks just so you know where the potential bounce can come, where you should set up your buy limit orders because once you have these support levels marked out on your chart, what you can do is you can start setting up buy limit orders slightly above those support levels so that you can have your uh, orders filled up and uh, you can start moving the price back to the upside because if you have the buy orders at the exact same price of the support then a lot of people are going to probably be piling in on that same level with you and what can end up happening is that some people will get filled and some people won't and the price is going to start moving to the upside and those who did not end up buying here because their order didn't fill are going to be forced to buy up higher thus pushing the price even higher so that's a little tip that i like to share and uh, let me know if that's something that you do and zooming into the falling wedge pattern here, as you can see, we do have a falling wedge pattern and we're losing the support of the pattern and we're back testing the previous support as resistance. As you can see, a pretty, pretty cool back test of um, resistance here. I got to say, this was a very nice uh, selling point for anyone holding theta. Obviously, this could have been risky. This could have played out absolutely differently. But if you potentially wanted to swing trade or you wanted to sell some of your tokens to buy back in cheaper this was a good opportunity because you were back testing a previous support level as resistance and you technically uh, and usually this plays out very well from a technical standpoint so you lose a level and then you come back up you retest it as resistance and you come back down to where you retraced from so that's what's happening uh, with a lot of altcoins at the moment and as you can see we're losing this low here and we're coming back down below it so in fact i think we're probably going to invalidate this potential double bottom pattern and we're dropping below the 1.618 fibonacci level on this smaller fib retracement so this smaller fib retracement has the swing high set up in november 2022 and the swing low in october same year and we've lost the uh the swing low here in uh, December and we've been on a downtrend ever since and we've reached the 1.618 all the way back in um, what was that December 17th then we had a retracement to the upside back test of resistance and now we're coming back down so this is another good buying opportunity here but obviously there is always room to go lower so Next up, you have the second Fib level on this smaller Fibonacci retracement. That's 62 and a half cents. Set up some buy limit order slightly above that, right? And um, because take a look at this. Look at these wicks here. Look at these wicks. This is not by accident. This is not by accident. The same goes for this Fibonacci level. A lot of people are dropping in these Fibonacci retracements just like you, and they're seeing these levels. And look at the buying pressure from, from those areas. That's why the higher you set it up from the support level, the more chances you have of filling your, uh, your buy order. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you bought in at 66 cents or at 66 and a half cents when you're planning to sell at the top of the next bull market where Theta is probably going to go to, I don't know, let's say $50 maybe. I'm not sure. I, I I don't I don't really follow Theta that much. I'm simply doing these updates because a lot of people seem to enjoy the videos and they like these updates. But I don't own any Theta, and I'm not planning to buy into Theta myself. But obviously, if you like the project and you believe in the project, go ahead and dollar cost average into it. I'm not saying it's a bad project. I'm saying that I'm just dollar cost averaging into other projects taking a look at the daily rsi as you can see we are back in the support block here the green support block that we have been retesting quite a few times since september and july of 2019 and every time you were in this in this green support block on the rsi or even slightly below it um one two three times four times you were slightly below it You've seen massive, massive retracements to the upside and you were uh, pretty much uh, almost guaranteed to make money short term. And obviously long term, the project, if the project is going to be successful, you're going to make money regardless. But if you're looking for that mid to short term trade, then buying once an asset is oversold is a very, very easy thing to do. And that's really an easy way to have profitable trades. So that is pretty much it for the theta breakdown here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, 
next week we're going to take a look at Theta once again and hopefully we're going to see some more action and a lot of stuff is going to be happening in the next couple of months. I'm waiting for the Fed to stop in increasing the interest rates uh, early 2023, maybe March, maybe May, maybe February on one of those FOMC meetings. And afterwards, I think crypto is going to start printing higher highs and higher lows. And obviously, Bitcoin is going to be leading the charge. And uh, once they start cutting the interest rates in 2024, that's when the bull market starts. So thank you all for watching this video. If I missed out anything on the charts, please let me know down below in the comment section. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Check out my Patreon linked down below. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.